Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to our YouTube channel once again. And in this particular video, I want to expose to you guys William Ruto's terrifying plan to counter Raila Odinga's anti-government demonstrations which are scheduled for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And allow me to begin this video by asking you a very simple question. Probably you can also give a very simple answer. What is the worst thing Kenya Kwanza government can do to Raila Amolodinga? What is the worst thing? Can they eliminate Raila Amolodinga? And what will be the consequences of eliminating Raila Amolodinga? Can they arrest Raila Amolo Odinga? And assuming they arrest Raila Odinga today, would that stop the demonstrations? What is the worst thing they can do? Can they ensure that Raila Odinga will not leave his house? What is the worst thing you think these guys can do? Because if you've been following the politics of this country, last week on Wednesday, Azimio held one of its most successful demonstration which shocked Kenya Kwanzaa. In fact, that Wednesday demonstration is what pissed off William Samoy Araputo. They never anticipated Azimio's capacity to stage demonstrations throughout the country. Kama wewe ni sakayo, hata kama wewe ni sakayo, umepanda juu ya muti, haki ya mungu utasuka. No kikatalia juu, tutasukua power, so tukate mbako kanyange chini. Hei ya unga, nimesema, hiko juu kuliko subulia, hei ya unga, itasuka lini, sabuni, hiko na mbeikari, kuhiko karae, hili wanaogea mwaka muzima. Sasa hii sarikari, yani ulituambia, ni bottom up. Tuanze kunyanyasa mwanaiji wa kawainda, tufikirie, tukifikia wale watu wa wakonju, mwanaiji wa saa isa tayari. Over 20 counties participated in that demonstration. And the truth of the matter is that almost all region of the Republic of Kenya participated in the demonstrations. And that move is what shocked Kenya Kwanza. And William Ruto had to convene an urgent meeting with Kenya Kwanza elected members of parliament, senators, and governors in Nairobi State House yesterday. That meeting was highly sensitive to an extent that not a single photo has actually emerged from that meeting. But it took place. And during that meeting, William Ruto and his team agreed on a counter strategy, which I want us to look into, into details. But before we do that, William Ruto is committing a few mistakes. And those mistakes, I'm sure he will continue to commit them. The first mistake William Ruto is committing is that he's trying to brand these demonstrations as Raila Amolo Dinga's demonstrations. Which means if they're successful, it means Raila Odinga is successful. And the truth of the matter is that as things stand today, the demonstrations are now beyond Raila Odinga. They've outgrown Raila Odinga. Because the people who are participating in these demonstrations, because the cost of living is high, they might not necessarily support Raila Odinga. So that's the first mistake they are doing. The first mistake they are committing is their continued attempts to issue threats against the demonstrations. You know, demonstrations are constitutional. There is no way you can brag and just stamp that whatever Azimio are engaging themselves in is actually unconstitutional. So that's another mistake. The fourth mistake they are committing is the fact that they are using force. How many people have lost their lives out of this demonstration? Several. And how many were just going about their business? There was this story of this man in Nairobi, a boxer, who just left his training just to cross to his house. Stray bullet. What these guys don't know is that that's how you am embolden people like what happened in kisi the kisi now are ready what happened in um was it in um madari previously where they were tear gassing houses then people had to come out to defend themselves and lastly the fourth mistake they're committing is to try and tag this as a mere demonstration as a lure fire which means they were trying to focus on the four counties of Luo Nation and then in Luo dominated counties. I mean, regions like Kibra, Madare, you know, those places. So in my view, those are some of the mistakes they are committing. But that's not the main objective of this video. 
In this video, I want to expose to you guys William Ruto's terrifying plan to counter Azimio Morales. Before we do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. And allow me to thank Dr. B and Patrick Sean and Danje for the coffee. I received it. Thank you guys so much. You can also do the same using the numbers. I know most of you nowadays have my numbers using the numbers you are seeing on the screen there. Uh, let us now dive into the main issue. Issue number one. The first strategy, strategy, strategy William Rudolph is planning to use is to counter the demonstrators in regions. The strategy William Ruto is planning is that he has tasked members of parliament from Kenya Kwanza to go to their constituencies with one aim that ensure that there's no mandamano in your constituency. It might be a tall order. I'm wondering how, for example, Felix Odur Jalango would go to his constituency to stop demonstrators from demonstrating in his constituency of Langata. Someone like Silvanus Osoro, I'm trying to figure out how he'll be able to stop his residents, his voters, from turning out to vote. Because the truth is, the moment Osoro will come with his group, then the other group will be coming. A confrontation will happen. At the end of the day, William Ruto will be safe. The person who will be blamed is Osoro. I'm just using that for example. Like for example, if for example tomorrow on, on, on Wednesday, Elisho Diambo will organize his group of tags because all members of parliament have tags. Then ordinary Kenyans from game also turn out for the demonstrations. Then these guys are going to meet somewhere. Then they are going to fight. Do you think William Ruto will be blamed? So in my view, that is a strategy which they are planning to do so that the demonstrations will be thwarted. You see, like in Kisi, the, the, the first time it happened, people were like, hey, what's happening? Again, it happened again. What's happening? But now they are saying, we are not going to allow that. In fact, Silvanus Osoro already met with UDA leaders to plan how to deal ruthlessly with the demonstrators in KC. Remember, they'll be operating with the support of the police. So that's the first strategy. The second strategy they are planning is house arrest. They want to ensure that Helo Dinga does not leave his house, Kalozo Musioka does not leave his house, Martha Karo does not leave his house, house. Babu Wino does not leave his house. In Kisumu here, people like Seth Adwin Yang, you know, those, those who have been organizing this, these activities will not leave their houses. Because they believe that if these leaders would leave their houses, that's how demonstrations begin. But assuming they succeed in holding Raila Odinga and the rest from leaving their houses, then the next thing you see is Kenyans pouring out of this, out in the street. How do you think that will impact on them? But that's a strategy which they are planning. Their third strategy is media blackout. They, they tried using uh, Facebook the, the other week which worked for them. This week, I think Kenyans are, were, were sharp enough and they were able to maneuver around. So Kenyans were able to use TikTok, Instagram, and WhatsApp. You never know. Maybe this coming week, we won't have internet. And therefore, Kenyans will be in the dark. So that's one of the assumptions they are trying to make. The fourth strategy is trying to win the narrative on the ground. I'm told William Ruto was very mad with members of parliament in status yesterday because he believes that these members of parliament are doing nothing. But the truth of the matter is that the finance bill is unpopular. And since the finance bill is unpopular, there is no way you can sell it to the locals. Most of these members of parliament would really want to sell the finance bill. But it's bad. You see, like, for example, I just want to give you William Ruto was trying to sell this finance bill to the people of Homa Bay. And I was laughing because, for example, he was telling the people of Homa Bay about furniture. That, oh, you know, 
Sisi sasa tutaweka hiyo tax tunataka kuweka tax what was import furniture. You know you are telling people about furniture import. People who if you go to Homa Bay even right now there is not a single shop selling imported furniture. All of them are are selling furniture made within Homa Bay and around. In fact if you want a bed you go look for a fundi the fundi will take you you know the way those fundis operate blah blah then you come and convince these people that because you've increased for them the tax which they are feeling because their life is now expensive you are do- telling them you are doing that so that you know people don't don't buy imported furniture It's, it doesn't make sense so they've lost that narrative and William Trump believes that if these members of parliament can go to the ground then they'll be able to change the narrative I think it's late already. Number five in my view, William Ruto is planning <coughs> to withdraw the security and the vehicles belonging to Azimio leaders. That is the MPs, governors, Raila Odinga, Uhuru Kenyatta. You know when you talk of withdrawing security, it means Raila Odinga some which are guarded, you remove all of them. The idea behind that is that it might force some cowards to fear going outside there because they'll fail they'll be exposed and that's why i began this video by saying that william ruto is coming is committing one mistake assuming these mandamanos are about Raila Odinga. the truth is these mandamano have outgrown Raila Odinga. they've outgrown these members of parliament so he must just come up with a different strategy the one is using is actually playing right into the hands of Raila Amolo Odinga. the other strategy they're planning is to buy key as mere leaders You see like when this finance bill was passed in parliament what they did was that they bought members of parliament from Azimio and then they told them you can't go to parliament and support this bill but you can abscond so most Azimio members of parliament did not vote that is the same strategy they want they want to buy out several Azimio members of parliament and tell them in your constituency please don't remember on this particular platform in one of my videos i explained to you guys William Ruto's strategy with this i explained to you guys as a mu sorry as a mu strategy i explained to you guys as a mu strategy and that strategy was simple they began in nairobi then a few counties and then they were now going to devolve these demonstrations up to the constituency level before you knew the demonstrations will be happening right in your village So they want to buy as new members of parliament the MCS MPs so that in their constituencies in their areas no mandamano will take place and because of money if for example you are to give an MCA 10 million not to not to participate or not to mobilize people for mandamano they will take and lastly there's the international pressure which they are trying to apply remember currently we have almost 10 head of states in Kenya they are trying to use some of those ten head of states and of course there's also the idea of intimidation that oh we'll use the military the police the GSU are already outside there i don't know what you think let me know whether you think william ruto's strategies on countering this as muralis are actually going to work until next time this is lee mcqueen bye bye